ladies left us alone. Uh oh, what trouble can we get into tonight? Yeah. Let's call this meeting to order. This is the regular meeting uh, for the month of June for the Eureka City Council. And if we can begin, Ms. Jessica, with a roll call. Well, I hope it's the regular meeting for the Eureka Planning Commission. Oh, what did I say? Eureka City Council. Oh, I'm getting visions of grandeur there, aren't I? He, he, yeah. Next, next, you'll say the mayor's calling it the order. <laughs> Planning Commission. Thanks, Jessica. Okay. You're welcome. <clears throat> um, Commissioner Reagan. I'm here. Commissioner Ames. Here. Commissioner Benino. Present. Thank you. Let the record show that Ms. Meyer and Ms. Um... Yeah, good. You're good. She's the vice. Very she's the vice up. chair. Ariaga are absent. She's so nice. uh, next item is a salute to the flag. Mr. Benino has uh, volunteered to lead us. So, okay. Go. Wait All a right. second. I, I'm pouring my drink. Okay. Ready? All right. I pledge allegiance to, to, to the flag of the United, United States, States, States of America, of America. and to, to the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation under God, God indivisible. indivisible with liberty, with liberty and justice for all. Excellent. Next, we have on our agenda approval of the minutes from May 11th. I presume everyone's had a chance to review those. Yes. Who would like I'm, to move? I'm, I move we approve the minutes. A second. All right. Any discussion, changes suggested? No. No. Not Just to me. do thumbs up voting. All those in favor, show me a thumb. Okay. Uh -oh. Has that you got? It? There we are. Three. Anybody okay. opposed? All right. Uh, minutes passed unanimously. Speaking of which, it's got to be three of us tonight. We got to all three agree to pass <laughs> anything. So just keep that in mind. <laughs> That'll be the day. Yeah. Really. Okay. Uh, next item is called oral communication. So that's an opportunity for the public to address the commission on any item that's not on our agenda. And I don't see any public members in this thread unless maybe, is that Lisa Savage? There are not. Okay. So what do we do? I guess we just close it and move on? Yes. Okay. We tried. Next well, item it'll... is... Uh, Next item is a public hearing for the concrete loft of the Redwood full unit residential lodging, the minor use permit. And which staff member is talking to us about this one tonight? Lisa's gonna take that one. Who? Lisa Savage. Lisa Savage. Good evening. Hi Lisa. Hello. How are you? Very good. It's early though. <laughs> yeah. Lisa, before we, before we start, before you start, I, I visited the, the area today and people had a lot of nice things to say about you. Oh. For what? Oh, yeah, say that again, please. <laughs> I said, I visited the area today and the people with whom I spoke had nice things to say about Lisa coming around. Oh, okay, where the concrete lodge is. Yes. Okay. Oop. That's not right. Oopsie. I think, Lisa, if you just do um, from beginning. Uh, it's not. Sh oh, there. Right. Showing there you go. Perfect. Everybody Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So. As introduced, good evening. We have a uh, full unit residential lodging minor use permit um, for a project that they have called the concrete loft in the Redwoods. The location is 2323 O Street and the case numbers are uh, MUP 20-0006 and RL-200005. General location, zooming in a little bit closer onto 2323 O Street, um, which is bounded on one side by 
um, Boone and on the other side by Del Norte Streets. Zooming in a little closer. And then a uh, street view of 2323 O Street. <clears throat> and then <clears throat> angling in a little bit on 2323 O Street so you can see down the driveway to where the parking is available. And the project description. The applicant is seeking a minor use permit for a full unit residential lodging, which is basically a vacation rental. So a couple of clarifications on vacation rentals. City regulations state occupancy cannot be greater than 30 consecutive days. It must not create a noise nuisance in violation of EMC 94.02, loud noises unlawful. And, it must and they must have an emergency contact and fire department access at all times. Um, the request for the minor use permit is a land use decision, and it's not a decision on the character of the applicants or the owners. The residential lodging will utilize an existing two bedroom single family home with a detached two car garage. And the maximum number of occupants in the residential lodging, not including children under 12, will not exceed six. That's two persons per bedroom, and it's a two bedroom residence, and two additional persons. It's available for rent all year. And although there's a maximum of six events per year allowed, the owner has agreed to not allow any events at the property. Lisa, is that? part of our conditions or is that just his option? His option. Okay. And um, no noise after 10, no noise or guests after 10 p.m. The operation and maintenance will be performed by the applicant and the owner who is the owner. The applicant is also the emergency contact and he works within three miles of the residence. Cleaning will be done by a professional cleaner, and the professional cleaner will also serve as an additional emergency contact. Uh, parking, there are three off-street off -street parking spaces available for the guests in the area that I showed you earlier, right off of O Street. Uh, summary of findings. The findings required by the Eureka Municipal Code to approve a full unit residential lodging minor use permit are discussed in the staff report and the required findings can be made. Uh, conditions of approval. Um, the residents must be inspected to residential standards by the building department prior to operating. The applicant will obtain any necessary building permits and follow up inspections required by the initial inspection. <laughs> And once the residential lodging is operating, the applicant will pay, pay transient occupancy tax or TOT by complying with Eureka Municipal Code section 35.070, which addresses the collection, record keeping, reporting and remittance of, of applicable TOT. Staff recommendation, approve with conditions, minor use permit 2005 and Residential lodging permit 20-0006, allowing a full unit residential lodging at 2323 O Street. And there's the recommendation. Questions? All right. Do we have any questions from staff on the report? I don't have any questions. How about you, Rich? Oh. Okay, so we've got a couple of emails. Uh, in the form of public comment. So I just wanna acknowledge that we received an email from Perry Clevenger and another one from um, Mercedes Compton. So did you two gentlemen get those two emails? Yes, yes. I got, yes, and I read them both. Yes. Rich? Okay. Yes. And we have no one else on the call with us, so we'll call that our public comment. And um, so we'll close the public hearing portion of that and bring that back, uh, bring it back to the commission for a motion and a discussion and a vote. Why, why don't you read the, the, the emails? 
Um, sure, happy to do that. This is an email from um, Perry Clevenger. He writes, Dear Rob Dumichel, Interim Director, I'm writing regarding the following um, regarding the following project titled Concrete Loft on the Redwoods Full Unit Residential Logging, Lodging Minor Use Permit. Uh, mentions the applicant and the property address. He says, my name is Perry Clevenger and I've lived in and owned my house at 2236 O Street, Eureka, California for over 40 years, which is right across the street from the project location. I'm also a past business owner in Eureka, California for over 25 years, Weatherby's Seafood at 1906 4th Street. If you're listening, Mr. Clevenger, that was the first restaurant I ate in when I moved to Eureka. <laughs> um, I'm writing, I missed you by the way. I'm writing because I have some concerns regarding the house across the street becoming an Airbnb property. Concerns are as follows, that both the owner and the renters of the property respect the neighborhood overall, that no neighborhood defacing, damaging, or criminal activity of others' properties happens. Large groups of people gathered for an event at the property, excessive and loud noise at the property, late night noise, music, et cetera, at the property, trash left in the neighborhood, blocking of driveways and garages, extra cars and traffic in the neighborhood. There's already an issue of Eureka High School students speeding up and down O Street when school is in session. Just for the record, my students are graduating this year. They will not be a problem next year. <laughs> and then uh, he, I think on the, I didn't print the last page because it just had a line that said, this has been a nice, quiet neighborhood for a while, and he hopes it stays that way. And then Mrs. Compton, Mercedes Compton, right? I just wanted to leave a comment about the process with the applicant, Patrick Griego. He does not seem to be taking it seriously for he has May 30th, 31st, and June 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 7th, and 8th open for booking on Airbnb, while June 5th and 6th are booked before his public hearing and subsequent licensing. He has been using Airbnb for years without a license and continues to do so. So that's our two emails. Thank you. Thank you. I, I was uh, torn because, well, obviously, if he's been, um, if if our applicant has been using as an Airbnb previously, well, naughty naughty, but at least he's um, moving into conformance. But also, if he's been using it previously, um, and we haven't had any complaints about all the issues that uh, Mr. Um, um, Clevenger. Clevenger. Uh, if he's already been using it, then Mr. Clevenger's concerns would seem to be, um, you know, not 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 particularly uh, worrisome because he hasn't complained yet. So I appreciate uh, both both parties writing and sharing their concerns. Any other thoughts on this particular item? Well, I agree with you, Jeff. There, uh, it is good that these people become uh, compliant because it'll help the collection of TOT tax, which is uh, something the city. Uh, needs at the time right now. So I agree with what you're saying and I, I am uh, feel the same way you do. <clears throat> no, I, I, uh, I'm a, a little, um, I have some concerns about this because I had two phone calls yesterday saying that there have been parties there and no loud noises and both of these part people who called me did not want this uh, approved. And I tried to explain to them that it's the zoning and uh, we, the, 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 uh, the uh, planning commission uh, didn't have, we would have to go along with the zoning. And if they wanted to go farther, they would go to the uh, city council at the next meeting in which they, both of them said, that's what they intended to do. And alternatively, um, Kristen, if I remember right, um, they're still subject to the noise ordinance. They can still call the planning department and issue a complaint. Uh, they can still right. call the police and have them come out and address, you know, obvious safety issues or noise violations. And what's the penalty for a property owner that has, a, you know, those types of activities? Oh, I believe that. Um... Trying to think, it's an infraction or a misdemeanor um, that they can be charged with for violating the municipal code. And additionally, um, they'll now have the 
if you can look at it this way, the extra protection of having the um, minor use permit and the residential lodging permit um, applied to the property. So the conditions of approval that you would place um, on the project if you uh, approved it this evening um, would also then apply to the site and they don't apply right now. And the uh, th this permit can be pulled. Is there a defined number of complaints or, or is that a discretionary uh, action by the director? If we received a complaint, we would do an investigation and um, if appropriate, then um, the license could be suspended. And I believe it has to come back to the planning commission um, for you to actually <clears throat> invalidated okay so hopefully rich those folks that called you are watching and they recognize that if they come and file a complaint that this this can come back before us and we can revoke the uh, revoke the license i think you're right jeff uh having the minor uh use permit uh is a pretty big stick now uh, as far as uh, uh the owner um informing the any uh, guests that uh you know, it's part of the deal. They have to be quiet. Yeah, good. All right, when do you guys want to make a motion? I move that the Planning Commission adopt a resolution of the Planning Commission of the City of Eureka approving a minor use permit, MUP-20-0006, for a full unit residential lodging, RL-20-0005. You want to second that, Rich? No. I'll second it. Okay, any other further discussion? No. Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say nay. Unanimous, so it passes. Okay. Thank you, Lisa. You're welcome, thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Know, uh, Thank you. Lisa, you you got to go inside, right, Lisa? I did not go inside. No, I I um, was outside putting the sign up when I spoke with um, a couple of the neighbors. Well, if you get the chance, I would encourage everyone to rent it sometime because it's a beautiful home. It was on the market a while, a couple years ago, and I was had the privilege of showing it. It's a beautiful home. Uh, next item on our agenda is the it's June twenty twenty. It's made entirely out of concrete. Yeah, yeah. Next item is our June 2020 zoning code update. And uh, who is in charge of this one, Kristen? I am. <laughs> Lucky you. I can get my screen to work here for you. Oops. Okay. While you're doing that, first question I have, um, this is a 500 page packet. Is there any rush? to get this done? Uh, well, we want to get the um, updates done as soon as we possibly can. Sure. My... Technical difficulty here. So can everybody see the screen full screen? No. Uh, well, I, I can't see anything right now, but uh, yeah. when you do bring it up, I can see it. Okay. At least last presentation I did. Yes. Now we can see it. See it now? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's um, good. So this is the June 2020 zoning code update. Okay. And um, in May of 2019, the City Council um, repealed and replaced Chapter 155, which is the Eureka Municipal Code Zoning Code section. Um, 
it covers the inland portion of the city, which is there. And tonight we're recommending that you hold a public hearing and adopt a resolution recommending council approve the proposed amendments. As I mentioned in May, uh, council adopted it. It became June, uh, effective in June of 2019. Um, we knew that there would be some cleanup amendments that would have to happen um, as time went on and, and staff got into using it and um, found the things that were working and that weren't working and did um, and just doing some cleanup. So this is this, this first cleanup amendment um, to the zoning code. There's approximately 130 amendments, a little more than that. Um, they amend things uh, like consistency and references, spelling and grammar and figures. And in your staff report, you have a summary of all of the changes that are proposed. And so tonight, again, uh, we recommend that you adopt the resolution, uh, make the findings required to approve the text amendment and forward your recommendation to the city council to adopt the uh, proposed June zoning code update. And I'm happy to answer any questions that I can. Any questions for Kristen right off the bat? No, not this time. No. Okay. So we've, uh, again, we we're supposed to hold a public hearing. There are no members of the public in the Zoom meeting with us. And I presume we have not gotten any feedback. I have not. So I will consider this a public hearing close the public hearing and remove the item back, uh, you know, um, move the item back to the commission, to us. Um, gentlemen, this is a, a, a big project. Uh, first of all, Kristen, thanks. This is a lot of details. Thanks for your work. I know this is just um, a lot of detail stuff. And I really appreciate the uh, summary. It was incredibly helpful. Uh, what I'm proposing, guys, is that we go through this uh, the, with a summary, basically one page at a time, so that we can, you know, for example, page one of the summary. All right, does anyone have any questions on that? And Kristen, if you could. Oh, wait, you, let, let, let us find that. Good. If you could unshare your screen, Kristen, um, I've got the code up on my computer. I I printed out the summary so that I could follow along, you know, with paper, uh, and I could follow along the electronic version. And I, I, I found that to be helpful. You, you want to see the summary on the screen? Uh, no, actually, the the whole thing. The with the amendments. I can do that. I think I can do that. Or with the changes. Do you, want to, do you want to go through the amendment page by page instead of the summary? No, no. I think the summary page by page, but we've all got a copy of the summary, right? You've got a copy. I've got a copy. In I've paper. got a copy. Yeah. So what we need would be the uh, the actual uh, thing with the changes and the deletions on the screen. That that would be helpful. Do you have a copy of the summary, Rich? Yes. Good. Do I, have okay. I, can I can I find it? Is another question. <laughs> Got it. All right. So if we're looking at the summary, does anybody have any questions on anything on that uh, page one of the summary? Uh, no. I I um I just did want to say the thing about. Uh, Changing the residential lodging to vacation rental, that's, that seems like a good thing because it was, uh, that was a little confusing. And, um, and the, uh, uh, the deal with the incorporation, where it says incorporation of state laws for ADUs, these are state laws that were passed this year or last year, or was it part of? Um, they were passed in 2019 and became effective on January 1st, 2020. Okay. Rich, do you have any questions on page one of the summary? No. All right, I've got a couple on um, towards the bottom of the summary. It's 204-4. It's talking about setbacks and limitations for ADUs. Mm -hmm. 
And I don't know, if, could we go to that section of the code? Yep. Oh, you did that quickly. Great. So uh -huh. as I remember, there is a provision for setbacks. And then I saw in the code for either a, um, a set number, you know, a, 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 a specified number for the setbacks or the average of the other streets on the face. Does that sound familiar, Kristen? Yeah, so there's an average setback um, allowance that's available in the code, and we don't think we're yeah. changing that. You don't think what? I don't think we're changing that, the average. No, setback. but I didn't see it for the side to side. And I remember when we talked about this, you know, we talked about um, how a lot of, of a lot of old Eureka is built on the north property line so that you can have a big yard on the south that's, that's usable. Um, and so I thought we had allowed for the average setback in the neighborhood on the sides and in the rears also. We did not, it's just on the front. Just on the front. All right. Um, well, I for one would like to move that we change that and that we add uh, the average, so the side setbacks for residential units then would be a specified number or the average of other homes on the block. For both the side setbacks and the rear setbacks, subject to safety access for fire departments, police, that kind of thing. So, my, and my thinking, gentlemen, is that, um, you know, if you've got a neighborhood where all the homes are built directly on the north property line, then we would, that would enable a, um, another home to be built in that neighborhood that matches the setbacks of the, the other homes in the neighborhood. I see what you're saying, Jeff. Does that mean you like that idea enough to second it? Uh, yes, I would second that uh, All right. as, as an idea for sure. What do you think, Rich? Yeah, I like that idea. Okay. Y'all ready hey, to vote on it? You want Wait, just to double check. You, you're moving to change the setbacks front and back to a specified number or an average of the setbacks on the block. That's already true of the front. And so we just extend that same language to the sides and the back, subject to um, review by emergency personnel for safety issues. So what um, is the advantage to doing that? I'm not clear. Say that again. What would be the advantage to adding that to the code? I'm not clear. If you, uh, my neighborhood, I live in Henderson Center area. All the homes are built, they're all old homes. They're all built on the north side, on the on the north property line. I mean, they're right on the property line. There's no setbacks whatsoever. When you're saying so, and it's, property line, do you mean a side property line or a front? Side property line. Okay. So if a if there were a vacant lot somewhere in the city and they were building a new home, and all the other homes were built like that, it would enable the new home to be built directly on the property line because the other homes would would average out to the same dimension. Yeah. <coughs> all those in favor of that change say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? That's unanimous. All right. And so the um, the last item, uh, thank you, Christian, for jumping there. Number 204-6, the last item on that page one of the summary. Is there any way that you could 
summarize the state laws for ADUs for us so that we know what we're getting into? So as far as setbacks go for ADUs, basically what the state law says is that um, instead of doing uh, where more often we have a five foot side yard setback or um, rear yard setback, it says we have to allow a four foot setback. So okay. in any location where we've, uh, we have a setback that's something other than zero, we've required a four foot setback. If we already allow a zero foot setback, for other structures, we're allowing a zero foot setback for accessory dwelling units also. Okay. And so that's the one big change from the state? Well, that's one of them for okay. this section, yeah. Okay. All right, so are we ready to move on to page two? Yes. Page two of the uh, summary. I think the change that we just voted on would would address uh, section 204-9. I think they had the same concern there. Uh, well, that looked like that was a typo, but okay. And, Typos and spelling. Yeah. That's it. Okay. Well, for what it's worth, and maybe my eyes are going bad. Oh, oh. I didn't see a change in adjoining to adjoining. So you might want to double check that one one more time in the summary. Any other questions on page two of the summary? So, so you were talking about 208-9 right in the middle of the page there on the second page. Is that what you're talking about? Add setbacks and limitations for ADUs? I was not. Oh, I, you, okay. Oh, you were talking about 2-4 at the, at the top of the page. Yeah. 204-9. At the top, okay, where it was, where the typos were and the adjoining. It says correct spelling of adjoining to adjoining. Oh, I see what you're saying. Oh, there. Okay. I, see I don't see a, cha a difference in the spelling to those two words, but. Oh, that's, okay. I see what you're saying. Okay. Any other questions on page two? Uh, the, let's see. The footnotes on uh, 20, what is it, 8 13 or 15 were a little confusing. I, I was just wondering if you could explain those a little bit. More closely for us. You said 20815. Uh, what was that? You said page 208 15. Uh, yeah, yeah, 15. Yeah, 13 and 15. The footnotes were a little. Uh, actually, on the packet, it was page 68. So I don't know if you can get to page 68 on the packet there, I think is where it was. On. Yeah, there you go. There we go. Yeah, something around there. I think maybe your packet page numbers are different than ours. Oh, okay. So down maybe. in the bottom right hand corner, there should be a document page. Oh, there. okay. Yeah, maybe a little bit further down there then. Yeah, maybe 71. Seventy-one. Yeah, I guess not. No, oh, well. Um, the residential, yeah. yeah, the residential transient thing. You're changing that from six months to one year. Is that yeah. state law? Is that state law, or is that just something we're doing to let them do? I thought we talked about that when we were doing the general plan stuff. So the previous code had it at one year. Um, it's proposed at one year in the coastal zoning code too. It's already been sent to the Coastal Commission, so we want to make them the same. Oh, okay. All right. So I think what we're going to have to do is refer to the document page in the column on the left of the summary. Uh, okay. Rich, did you have any other questions about page two? 
of the no, summary? I don't. I don't. I don't. Okay. I don't. Page okay three that. of the summary. Yep. Page three of the summary. I have question about uh, section 304-6. And actually, Joe, you just raised it, the six months to one year. So never mind. Anybody, anybody else have questions about page three of the summary? Uh, yeah, um, I guess 304-11 uh, regarding the, re the vacation rentals. Um, it looks like they changed the thing where there's uh, no limitation on events. I remember we had quite a discussion about that. And uh, uh, that was taken out, I think, and I'm not sure why. Uh, that was something that we sort of promised the residents that we would have uh, a, a, a set limit on events per year or per quarter, something like that. I, I, th I think this, this, this house, we, we discussed this night, tonight at 2323 O Street, that was mm -hmm. one of, the, uh, one of the, the factors there that they could have either four or six events a year. Right, but this is this this new this, we're going to make a change. It's not going to apply anymore. See, the old thing applies, but now this said that they were going to change it to uh, to not have as many to allow more events. I, I'm not sure what's going on there. So 304-11, I think, is the page, Kristen. So well, that, that that's the whole. Rentals are limited to six events per year. Can you point yeah. to us where where's that? I had it I had it on page ninety-five, document page ninety-five, maybe. Was that where it was? Yeah. I remember Joe, your pages don't match her pages. So can you see your screen, Joe? Yeah, I can. So, oh, is that it right there? Did you, can you see my cursor? Yeah. Should be right there. Yeah. So, Six events. Oh, okay. But the way that the code was previously written, for some reason, the number of events that you were allowed to have for multi-unit was different than the number you were allowed to have for full unit which didn't make a lot of sense to us but we've also changed the way that we're looking at vacation rentals um, we've switched them now to be instead of being um, a single room or multi-room or the full unit it's whether or not the proprietor is on the site mm -hmm. okay so would a I'm sorry, Joe, go ahead. Okay, so it's just, so like I said, maybe I misread that. So vacate, it's still limited to six events per year. Right. Okay, there we go. Think, okay, well, and that's, that's, for, that's for both types of units? Correct, that's whether the proprietor is on site or not. Okay. And so let's say that there's a uh, owner of a large bed and breakfast in a multifamily zone, and uh, they're, they get a, um, you know, they have, uh, request for a lot of events. Is it possible for them to apply for a variant to that? If they can do a minor, keep looking. Like, like if they have weddings every every week. Yeah, they could request um, a variant. Okay, I'm happy with that. I'm. You know, there are, I could imagine someone like that, that, you know, maybe it's a, a wedding or maybe it's a charity event or something like that. And if the property would allow for it, um, that makes sense. All right. Any other questions on page three of the well, summary? I, I just want on, on this, on this particular topic, what, what it says six events, but what if the planning commission, for what reason, I wouldn't know, I don't know. Uh, said, no, you can't have six, you can only have three. You can do that on a minor use permit or a use permit. Okay. Could you explain that a little more, Kristen? What do you mean by that? You can make a condition of approval that is different than what's allowed by the code. Okay. So if there were a unit that were in, a, say, next to a nursing home, we might choose to limit their events to three instead of six. Correct. So you could limit their events to only being indoor instead of outdoor. Does that answer your question, Rich? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Okay. 
Any other questions on um, on uh, vacation rental units? No. Um, I got some questions about tree removal. Yeah, me um, too. Okay, let's jump there. So section 304-15, you go, Joe. Yeah, uh, the uh, tree removal section uh, seems to have grown uh, quite a bit. Um, what was like a two page thing or less is now four pages of uh, regulations. Um, in the uh, reason it uh, says uh, encourage development, but by not requiring tree permits, uh, but that's uh, not quite accurate. Um, I've noticed there's quite a bit of stuff and language in there that uh, prevents development. And um, uh, it's, this is quite a significant change. And um, I would say, uh, I've got a lot of amendments I'd like to make to this, but I would prefer if that was just uh, completely removed, all those changes. And uh, I would like to request that there be a much wider public hearing about this uh, entire tree removal um, section. Uh, for instance, the council should have a workshop or some kind of a, uh, you know, a series of meetings uh, because uh, the changes here um, uh, counter to what it says there that makes it develop it easier. It actually makes it harder. Um, there's a lot of things in there that uh, would drive up cost. Uh, such as getting a lot of environmental uh, people involved and reports. Um, uh, it's significant infringement on the uh, uh, what we call the, uh, the public welfare, uh, meaning that is uh, people being able to enjoy their property, uh, the general welfare. Uh, so I and also public safety due to uh, hazardous trees. Apparently, uh, you have to have an expert tell you your tree is hazardous, as opposed to the owner who lives there. Uh, being uh, trusted to know what's hazardous. Um, uh, the protected trees, uh, they apparently the, in the preamble, uh, uh, city's history and character, distinctive trees are protected, uh, but you've got four or five pine trees listed here that are not part of the distinctive character of Eureka. Pines are not uh, really a big part of the Redwood uh, Coast uh, uh, forest. So, um, I'm just thinking that uh, I would move that we just uh, leave the language as it is right now and next year uh, after a series of meetings with the public, uh, we hash this out to uh, be a little bit more uh, residential owner friendly. I too share your how does this Go ahead, how, does, how does this affect that the long discussion we had on the tree removals uh, by the by the uh, Eureka City Schools, I believe it's on West Street, uh, uh, the Beret Center. Uh, uh, right. The, the, the eucalyptus trees that those, I was were, I was I was yeah, in ahead. favor of not removing those, and uh, and it was passed that they're going to remove them. But how does this language change that or apply to that? It doesn't apply to that because those are in the purple. Yeah, and also they're not part of these protected trees because uh, okay. eucalyptus trees are not native to this area. Got and it. and but but because they're 150 feet tall, it, it does make a difference. So, so anyways, uh, there's a lot of uh, things in this that uh, that I don't really particularly like, and I would like to just uh, move that we just leave the language the way it was, and then have a series of uh, hearings uh, to determine. Uh, uh, what the language should be uh, in the future and then change it uh, next year. That was a motion. Do you share that uh, that thought, Rich? Uh, uh, to the staff, is there any big project that's going on or getting close to going on on, on tree removal? Not that I'm aware of. So if I could just um, explain a little bit why staff has proposed these changes, if that would maybe help. Good. Um, currently, we believe that the, um, the regulations that are in the code are much more 
restrictive than what we're proposing here. For example, if you're building a house, you have to get a tree permit to take down one of those trees that's listed um, as the commercial tree. Whereas the proposed language will allow you to remove those trees if you show on your site plan that they're going to be removed. The question that staff asked ourselves, that we asked ourselves was, what is the purpose of the tree permit? Why are we doing this? What are we trying to protect or regulate or, um, you know, what do we want to have input on? And the thought was that because these lovely green areas, gulches and greenways that we have in town here and a lot of the um, redwoods and other types of trees that people have on their private property, those are the kinds of things that we would want to protect and retain and maintain. We don't so much care about whether or not Cal Fire thinks it's a commercial tree, uh, which is what the basically the, link, the list was prior. Um, there's no provisions in um, in the code right now for removing hazardous trees at all. So we've added that in. Um, the requirement to have um, a timber operator provide a report, that was in the previous code, so that's not an entirely new thing. Um, we did add in some language about um, an actual tree permit process, which was missing out of the, the, the past code, um, or the current version of the code, excuse me. And then the list of protected trees is a list that um, I put together based on information that I found um, on online. So looking at the types of trees that grow here, that are common here, that we find here, that's how this list was created. I see. Okay. Thanks for that background. I was kind of wondering what that uh, was about too. Um, I certainly appreciate, Christian, your efforts. I would like to be able to look at this a little more in detail too. Um, would it be, uh, would staff's preference be that we just remove all the changes to the tree section and come back and do that over an extended period as, by the way, I'm going to second Joe's motion. Uh, is staff's preference that we do, that we remove it all now and come back and look at it later, or that we just take our time and make changes now as it's before us in the context of the big plan? What do you think, Kristen? So you can either um, make a recommendation to remove it now if you'd like to. Um, staff will take that recommendation forward to the city council and then they can decide what they want to do. or you could recommend um, modification to it to make it to something that's a little more acceptable to you. Okay. Your choice. So Joe, if we take it out now, well, and let me, let me add, I don't think I'm gonna vote for moving this forward tonight, the, the big plan tonight anyway, just because it's a lot of pages and I haven't had a chance to work through all of them. So I think we're going to end up taking another swing at this at uh, next month's meeting anyway. Um, but having said that, Joe, would you prefer to um, take our time and address this in the context of this uh, big edit, or would you prefer, as your motion said, to pull it out and address it separately later? Uh, I'd say I'd, I'd like to pull it out uh, uh, now and then uh, like I said, we it, it's there's if you read between the lines, uh, there's a lot of stuff that uh, does not make it easy to um, take down a tree. For instance, uh, if you're building something uh, and there's a tree that is 16 feet away from your uh, construction zone, you can't take that tree out, even though it's in the way of your tractors and all your workmen and tradesmen. Uh, that should be at least 30 feet away. I mean, 15 feet is is right there, right where you're working on uh, laying foundations and bringing in trucks and stuff. Um, the emergency thing uh, is based on uh, the Humboldt Bay Fire District, Public Works Director, or the directors, a word about a hazardous tree. What about the property owner? He should be listed there. 
um, uh, that uh, uh, the uh, the next thing is um, uh, solar access. It says when uh, authorized part of the tree permit, uh, you can uh, have an arborist or uh, they can hinder the sunlight. Systems may be uh, there, they may reduce the mass to provide solar access. What about cutting the tree down to provide solar access? You sure. see, they, they don't, then likewise. Right. So anyways, yep. there's a lot of changes that need to yep. be made if you read between the lines here. Uh, it, you would be, I mean, just to, to approve the, the tree permit, there's five different things that have to be uh, uh, done and including you have to redesign your project to avoid the tree. So. This, this, if you read between the lines, this is not residential owner for, uh, friendly. This is only friendly to the tree lovers. I love trees, but this is infringing on private property rights. We need to have more public hearings on this specific issue throughout the year and then put this into next year's redo of the zoning. Well, you and I got to get Rich to go along with us or we can't pull this out. Rich, do you have any, do you share? our concerns or do you like what you see? No, that's fine. I go along with what Joe is suggesting. All right. All those in favor of the motion to pull to so what we're, um, as I understand it, Joe, what we're doing is we're pulling all the changes to the tree section out for Correct. now. Mm -hmm. And then we hope to come back and look at that. So don't pull it away, Kristen, just save it and then bring it back to us you know, next month and uh, you get a chance yeah, to look at it then. All those in favor of that, uh, say aye. 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 That's three, any opposed? None, the ayes have it. Okay, anything else? Um, well, on the bottom of page three of the summary, uh, thank you for adding flagpoles. <laughs> I think flagpoles are a noble addition to yeah, property additions. Very good. Page four of the um, pr proposed changes. Any questions from you guys? Uh, let's see. Oh, oh, well, I just had a thing about the, the code for the uh, accessory dwelling units, but it, there again, the state law thing kind of uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, preempts us. I, that's uh, what, what I'm reading here. Before we get there on lighting, um, I was reading through that. I was having trouble, Kristen, following it. But it looks to me like residences are not allowed to have floodlights, even if they are on a motion sensor uh, that shine on sidewalks, alleys, those kinds of things. And I mean, I look for that. I'm trying to think. Um, there, there is a hypothetical floodlight in a hypothetical alley close to my hypothetical house that the hypothetical owner really likes, because when people walk up and down the alley late at night or early in the morning, the floodlight goes on. Light is a really good disinfectant if someone's thinking about. Um, misdeeds. Yeah. It also is a good warning to uh, the neighbors that may be laying awake in their bed at two in the morning that, uh, hey, somebody's walking down your alley. I don't, it doesn't look to me like this code allows for that kind of security lighting in a residential area. So lighting, light cannot be directed off of the site. But that includes sidewalks and alleys. You have to it, put it in sidewalks and alleys. Okay. I mean, obviously, there's well, there's shielding that's required to help prevent that. Mm -hmm. um, and we did add the part in about um, motion sensor lights can exceed the 16 foot height limitation. That was right. Added. I would like to add in here that we allow for security lighting on the perimeter of a property uh, that that shines that that can shine on public right of ways not neighboring property but public right of ways like sidewalks and alleys if they have a motion sensor 
and they don't stay on for longer than what five minutes. I'd be in agreement of that, Jeff, uh, except for the limit on the five minutes thing. I mean, you know. What do you think it should be? Oh, I don't know. Uh, just, well, I'd, I'd say 10 minutes, but uh, it really doesn't. 10 minutes. I'm good with 10 minutes. How's that sound to you, Kristen? Uh, I'm going to have to check on that. I don't know if we can authorize um, lighting to shine onto the public right away. Okay. Well, why couldn't we? Because it's the public right away. There's a yeah. property owner that's shining the light onto it. Yeah. Hmm. There, there was something in there that said something about you can't have a light shining on the roadway or something up in right. above or below well, there. And as I understand roadway, because you have people driving and that, that could create a driving hazard. But um, alleys and sidewalks, seems like that would be appropriate. Rich, do you, is that, is this sounding reasonable to you? Yeah, I, I think that 10 minutes is better than five also. Okay. And wasn't right. there something about residential things that are exempt from this? Or is that, was I misreading that? So in the non-conforming section, uh, it requires that uh, properties that are non-conforming to the outdoor lighting requirements be brought up to code. We're exempting um, single family residences and alterations to the exterior structure or sorry, interior only, uh, no alterations to the exterior. Oh, I see. Okay. I see. Does, does not apply to single family uses. Okay. Yeah. Huh. That's oh, for non for bringing them up to code. I'll get it. I see what you're saying, how that does. All right, yeah, yeah. So okay. I agree with you, Jeff. Uh, we need some uh, 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 more latitude on that, especially for alleys and sidewalks. So I would move, Kristen, that we add something in here that residences and uh, both single and multifamily can add security lighting. I don't know if you want to recommend a height limit on that, Kristen, but security lighting, um, you know, security flood lighting that would uh, be triggered by a motion detector that would uh, shine on public right of ways. Uh, would it be better to, to just reference sidewalks and alleys? Would that be a better way to identify those, Kristen? Probably because the public right of way would also include the street. Right, so let's do sidewalks and alleys, uh, but not to shine on neighboring properties. And not to stay on for more than 10 minutes. Well, and we're just talking about residential? And multifamily. But how about a place like where you live in Henderson Center, where there's there are alleys that uh, businesses back up to, and uh, they have floodlights there. Is there any reason we wouldn't want to uh, Kristen, is, is that prohibited in commercial and neighborhood commercial areas right now? Yes, just like it is in residential. All right, well, let's let's remove the residential and multifamily distinction with any property owner. Thank you, Isabel. Any okay. property owner can do that for security purposes. Me, okay. me, me, meaning industrial property owner. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that uh, uh, enhances the general welfare and the prosperity of the area. Uh, it cuts down on crime. It really yeah. does. Yeah. Because there, there are two or three alleys in, in Henderson Center where people empty their trash and stuff, businesses, uh, and and you they would love, they either have floodlights at night or they'd be, they, they would want them. All right, any other discussion before we vote? All those in favor say aye. 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 Three, anybody opposed? Unanimous. Who seconded the motion? Um, Joe did. I, I did. I was Thank you. Uh, I moved it and Joe seconded it. Any other questions on page four of uh, the summary? Nope. I, nope. I had a question on pay, on um, the document page, it's section 312-2. Wait, we're back up page four? Yeah, still on page four. Okay. 312-2. Um, we changed the high quality section, the part where'd that go? 
Oh yeah. Um, I was curious why we didn't allow um, one piece sighting with bats. So we didn't allow. I'm sorry, what? There was a distinction. You could do uh, sheet sighting with bats, but they had to be separate pieces. It right. disallowed sighting that had bats formed in it. Right. And that's the way the current code is. And why? Because it's a, it's a higher quality material. Mm. So anything that's preformed is low quality? Um, it's not as high quality, I guess. Okay. I'm, I'm not, I'm yeah. trying to imagine what that might be and, and nothing's coming to mind. Right. So we take out the high quality because it is so subjective, yeah. as you can see. Right. Um, the board and batten requirement, again, it's in the code that way right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I thought, I, I agree with you, high quality subjective and, and uh, you know, you can't enforce that. I just, uh, is there a particular product out there that we're trying to avoid with the preformed bats in it not that i'm aware of yeah hmm. I, mean, it's, I wasn't aware of anything either and so that's it it seemed like uh i mean if someone produces four by eight sheets of siding that has preformed bats in it as let's say it's a cement based product that um you know they're able to pour into a mold and, and pop out I'm, I'm not sure why we would care about that uh, but hmm. any other questions on that particular uh, summary page? Uh, no. No. I just have to commend you just to show you how detailed Kristen is. They're adding the little sedia on the C. Gotta be Are you? Right on. You, Kristen? That was me. What an eye for detail, my goodness. Are we ready to move to page five? Yes. Okay. Any questions on page five? Uh, my only thing is about uh, revising the fence height to six or to seven feet now from six feet. So we're proposing to do that so that it matches the building code. Oh, uh, whose building code? Our building code? Yes. Oh, I thought, the building, I thought the building code was six. It was or, six until uh, 2018 and then it changed to seven. But not in Eureka, it was in the state you said? Or so the building, the building code adopted in the city of Eureka right now allows you to go up to seven feet without a building permit. Our okay. code cuts you off at six feet, so we're just making them match for the most part. Okay. Now, what happens to all the people that uh, who built a six-foot fence uh, prior to 2018? Have they been informed that they can now go to seven? We wouldn't know who they were because there's no permits required for them. Okay. Is there a mechanism for notifying all the people in the city of Eureka that you can now go to seven? Um, yeah. I would, uh, if this, yeah, if this, uh, change is made uh it all the people that wanted seven foot and were told no prior to 2018 and there was a lot of them i've been to a couple of meetings where people were hey i want this fence uh, you know the security and stuff oh no six is the limit on the alley well i can see over a six foot fence i can jump over a six foot fence seven uh -huh. get out of here so, well, I used to be able to. Yeah, uh, there you. Thank uh, you. But, thank uh, you. But, but the um, I I think the if this change is made, the city needs to take out ads in the paper, or uh, do an editorial, or put it in the the monthly newsletter that uh, anybody that's got a six foot fence, you can now go to seven. Uh, this needs to be all those people that uh, you know wanted the extra security and got ripped off and slapped down. They need to be informed that this is now going to be a change and they can add another foot to their fences. I, I really think that that's part of being transparent, just to slip this thing in and not uh, let all the people who years and years ago 
got ripped off, uh, stay in the dark is not good. So I would, uh, uh, there's no motion involved here, but I just want to put that out to the to the powers that be, the new manager, whoever that is, that uh, that, that there needs to be a an advertisement, uh, even ads on TV. You know, you know, if you put a lot of public service ads out, that's something that should be done. Could you, uh, Kristen? Could you uh, go to section three twenty point or three twenty dash five and review us through the clarified materials? Again, the high quality term is too subjective. So we're trying to tell people what we do or don't want them to use for fencing, the types of materials that they can, they can use. Um, so um, decorative masonry, ornamental steel or wrought iron, brick, stone or wood are um, the types of materials that are allowed for open fences. Um, there's been a prohibition on using chain link and other wire fence. Um, we've seen some really nice um, proposals for woven wire fences. Um, lots of times there'll be um, like a wooden frame that goes around um, the fence section and then there's wire uh, across it instead of using boards or, or metal or something. Um, and so we've added that woven wire fences. Um, the woven wire fences are not allowed, but the ones that are welded, the welded wire fences, those could be allowed. And so what about a interior lot that wants to fence their backyard and the only people that are gonna see it are the property owners maybe the neighbors or the people that drive down an alley. That they, seems like an appropriate use for a chain link fence to me. This is for front, front fences, isn't this street tracing only? Yeah. I didn't see that. They're not allowed within the minimum required front and street side setbacks in the residential zone district. Okay, I missed that. And they're not allowed between a building and a street frontage in a mixed use zone. Say that last part again. They're not allowed between the building and the street in a mixed use zone. Okay. So in your example, they could do a seven foot tall open fence in their backyard. Okay, that's what I want to make sure. Excellent. Any other questions on? I, I, I do, I do. Uh, so, I want to direct this directly to Joe. Joe, uh, I, I'm in favor of everything you're saying except I don't like your use of the word ripped off uh, as frequently as you used it. Uh, okay. I, I don't think that uh, the people, because that was the, that was the, the law at the time, it had to be six feet. Uh, mm -hmm. No one got ripped off, they just, the law changed, that's all. So oh. to say we should apologize to these people who got ripped off, I, I, I just don't feel comfortable with saying that. Well, that's your opinion, but uh, you know the people that were fighting for a higher fence, you know, they they weren't happy. And on a related note, I want to sue the federal government for all the time I lost driving 55 in my childhood <laughs> when we could have been driving 70 the whole time. And there you go. Yeah, you got ripped the, uh, off. See? There. Yeah, all that time you got ripped off. There's no way else to say it. You were ripped off. <laughs> That's the appropriate we're still having term. fun. Rich. Hey, Jessica, are you Hold having fun? Hold on for a sec. Yeah. Are you, are you having fun, Jessica? Okay. Yeah. Yes, Rich. Rich, you had a question? Stepped away. Oh, well, he stepped away. Okay. I was getting his hat. Okay. So. Okay, we can continue now. All Thank right. you, sir. Hat. Oh, there you go. All right. Any other questions on page five? Uh. Just the thing about the roundup uh, on uh, 3324-4, uh, the fractional spaces. I thought we had voted round down, or maybe I misremembered that. I don't know. I, I could have sworn we, we voted round down on parking spaces in the fraction. What number are you, Joe? Uh, it says 34, 324-4, right about just a okay. couple things down from the Fence okay, stuff. I got you. I got you. Yeah. 
Uh, I thought we voted to round down on that. We did. I did too, Joe. We did, Joe, to, to round down. Mm -hmm. Well, what whether we did or not, let's uh, make a motion and, and uh, make that change. Okay. I will make that motion and we'll do that. I second. Okay. It has to be a little bit more clear than that. So on section 324.4, fractional spaces. Um, the typo was the other way around. So yeah. we're gonna- The typo second. should say round down. I'm looking at it. It looks like the whole thing is being struck, Kristen. It is. Oh. So we're adding it back in is what we're doing, correct? That's what I'm hearing you say. Right. So paragraph or, or paragraph D number four, fractional spaces, that will remain in. Oh, okay, there we go. Yeah. That's that's all moved through Thank that. You. Okay. All right. Any other things on uh, page five? We, we gotta vote on it. Oh, yeah, that's right. Thank you. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Ayes have it. Anything else on page five? Nothing for me. Rich? No, I'm fine. Page five is as far as I got. Is this okay. a good time to continue this item until our next meeting? Sure. Um, do you think it's possible that you'll be able to finish this at the next meeting? The reason I'm asking is because currently the city is under the state's regulations for accessory dwelling units, and they are not as permissive as the uh, regulations that are being proposed in this update. So the longer it takes us to get these proposed or approved, the longer it's gonna be before those will apply to folks who are wanting to build accessory dwelling units. Yep. Wait, did, wait, did you just say that there are restrictions or less restrictive? We're more, per, we're proposing to be more permissive than the state. Oh, I thought all these things uh, where it said we're doing it because we have to be as permissive as the state. Some, as of, some of them we are. An example would be, um, the state law says that if you're converting an existing accessory structure to an accessory dwelling unit, then you're only allowed to do a maximum of 150 square foot addition to it. And the addition can only be for egress or ingress. So if you use the example of you have a 500 square foot shed, and you want to convert it to an accessory dwelling unit, under state law, you can only add 150 square feet to it and it has to be for an entry door. What we're proposing uh, in our update is that you can't, if you have a 500 square foot accessory structure, you can do an addition onto that up to 1200 square feet. Oh, okay. So, more, more permissive than state law. Okay, and does that say that on the, the reason area where we are doing it because we want to be more permissive? Is that, I don't recall seeing that anywhere. Um, I think we just incorporated hmm. the state laws for ADUs. Yeah, so. I am I'm, confident I will be able to get through the rest of it by next month. Yeah, me too. I mean, I already did, but yes, yes. Me yeah. too. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So I would continue it that, too. That also has the advantage of allowing the other two members to have some input. Yes. Okay, so I move that we continue this particular item to our next regularly scheduled meeting. I, I second, second that. that. I'm gonna let Rich count as the second on that one, Joe, so he can get his name in the minutes one okay. more time. All He's right. running a little light tonight. Any yep. discussion? Nope. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? The ayes have it.
Okay. okay, thank you, Kristen, for all your work on that one. All the rest of the staff too, a lot of details there. Next item on our agenda is business. We don't have any. And then reports and communications. Do you have any uh, reports for us, Kristen? I do not. Okay. Anyone uh, else have something they wanna talk about? I do. Go. Okay. Uh, do we have anything in our bylaws uh, about missing a number of meetings before you're off the commission? I do not know the answer to that. Does anyone else? Either in the bylaws or in the um, municipal code. Either way. It would be, it would be the bylaws. Yeah, I, I don't remember anything in the bylaws about that. No. Me either. I don't either. Usually it's on other boards and stuff that I've been on, but not, I don't remember anything about missing meetings. Hmm. Feel free, okay. if you have a proposal, feel free to uh, send that in and get it on next month's agenda and we can talk about it. Probably, I don't, I don't know that we can set it ourselves. We might have to send it up to city council and let them approve it, but, but certainly we can talk about it and make recommendations. I mean, it just seems to me that a lot of times that we, we, we're there, they're the three of us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This, this year, I think, has been particularly rough. So, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, so I, I, it's in the municipal code. Oh. What? Hang on just a moment, please. I just, I have to tell you, Kristen, I'm amazed at how quickly you can look stuff up. It's impressive. We try. Um, so it's in um, the boards and commissions created by council section of the municipal code. It's mm -hmm. section 3.006 3 vacancies. If a member of a board or commission absents himself from three consecutive regular meetings of such board or commission, unless by permission of such board or commission expressed in its official minutes or ceases to be a qualified elector of the city, his office shall become vacant and shall be so declared by council. The council actually has to take an action to say that um, they're no longer on the commission or board or committee. So if I miss three meetings in a row without your guys' permission, then y'all could appeal to the city council and the council could declare me absentee and derelict of my duty and that my seat is vacant. Did I understand that correctly, Kristen? I believe that's the basic, yes. But it has to go to the council. Correct. Council, <clears throat> uh, Board and commission members are appointed by council, so they would be unappointed by council. And it has to be unexcused absence. It just well, it's just pretty easy then. We just won't tell Jeff where we're meeting all the time. <laughs> yeah, right. Anything else, Kristen? I heard you talking a little bit. No, I was laughing. I'm sorry. Okay. No, no, don't. You do not have to apologize for laughing in these meetings. I don't know. Maybe maybe historical preservation or something like that. Do I need to talk to Art about that? Do I need to tell him to lighten up? Mm -hmm. Not Art, Ted, Ted. Ted, yeah, Ted. Do I need to talk to Ted Loring about that? Yeah, you won't any like other, that. Any other reports and communications? No, not for me. Next item on our agenda is adjournment. Is that okay with everybody? Aye. Aye. Aye, all right, we're adjourned. Thank you, gentlemen, we'll see you next month. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.